To make a great action sequence, you have to start with a great story sequence. An action sequence can be fun to watch, but unless you're invested in this character and what they're trying to do, it doesn't mean much. One of the things I really like about Marvel Comics is when you look at a panel, the characters really pop. You can always see the characters, you know what they're doing. When we were building out the raft sequence for our E3 demo, we actually went in and we talked with Insomniac a lot about how we could exactly position the villains so we would almost see like these images that flash panels from the comics themselves. We wanted to try and get that same angle and same framework into these scenes. We don't actually do storyboards. We actually do a 3D previs. I'm talking about pre-visualization in 3D. The entire file will actually look uh, like what you see in the final product, but it's all grayscale. And then the animators just do temp animations to block out all the scenes, block out the cameras, and then set up the flow of the actual combat. And once we agree upon what we're going to do, we then go to the mocap stage and shoot it. To achieve both Spider-Man's motion and some of the other more stylized or superhero characters, we drew from everything possible. Right off the bat, we looked at parkour. We looked at gymnasts. We actually got amazing things out of our stunt people. A lot of wonderful things just sort of bloomed from blue sky thinking on a stage with a stunt person. What was interesting about working on this project was that there's a lot of different characters. So for example, we have a flying enemy like Vulture, we have a giant lumbering enemy like Rhino, or we even have enemies with superpowers like Electro. So we actually have to consider each of the villains as if it's its own main character. So we have to think about the look, the effect, and even how that character moves. How do you like my new suit? Dashing. Where'd you get it? It's an exclusive club. If it looks good when it's really rudimentary, once all has the bells and whistles of like finished models and lighting and audio and effects, that's just icing the cake. We actually spent a lot of time making sure that all the surfaces look really wet. You can see at certain times when you look at the characters really closely that there's actually water dripping down their, their masks or their faces. And I felt that that was really important to really nail uh, the emotion we're trying to get. There's a sort of gut feeling that hits your stomach when you have your hands on the sticks and you're playing and you're swinging around and you almost get this moment where you're just in this this state where you're just purely interacting with that world where you're like, all right, they made a great game. And that's sort of where I, I've been at, you know, since probably a couple months now. And I'm really, really excited to get this out into the world and see how people react. You are everything that's wrong with this city. The main reason we wanted to do a completely different story, a brand new story, was to give players and fans of Spider-Man something completely new. I mean, I'm tired of seeing the old stuff. I'm tired of seeing the origin story. And guess what the great thing is? So is everybody else. We did all our research. People have played it, seen it, watched it. People want to be surprised. People want new stories. And they want to see their favorite characters in new positions, new challenges, higher stakes. And it was the perfect opportunity. And the great thing was that Marvel was like, go for it. So the reason we started the story with Peter being 23, we thought, well, okay, so we, high school is a very important time in Peter's life, but we've seen that already. What's another time when I was thinking back to my, when I graduated college, I still to this day remember like my first job, my first apartment, my first time I was getting bills, not depending on my parents for it. And I feel like that was really influential of just helping me determine who I am. And I felt like it'd be a great time to explore that with Peter. This is really a coming of age story for Peter. It's his journey becoming a, a young adult and through the themes of mentorship and partnership, he kind of takes that next step of becoming an adult in his life. Oh, I gotta run. Um, thanks again for the party and everything. It, it, it really means a lot. The biggest challenge facing Spider-Man is what it's always been. It's just two worlds. It's two worlds colliding. It's seeing Peter and Spider-Man's world colliding. It's, you know, go back to what Bill Roseman, the creative director at Marvel Games always says, the best experiences are when Peter's world and Spider-Man's world collide. And that causes a lot of <laughs> issues. So the Ultimate Spider-Man series was a huge influence in terms of not exactly the story they were telling, but the structure of the entire series. They towed the line between the familiar and fresh, like, you know, the symbiote was treated a little bit different. Uh, Gwen and MJ were treated a little bit different. Like, there's just enough surprises that when you got the new issue, you weren't really sure what was going to happen next. To me, it was a little bit of a relief that you can change certain things and people will actually love it if it's done the right way. And so early on we talked a lot about creating our own universe, the familiar at fresh, and we thought one of the ways we would do that is to include Miles. And he doesn't come into this world through some you know alternate reality or some other way. He's just living in the city, just like Pete. And the way we, we have Miles is he's he's a big Spider-Man fan. He loves Spider-Man. And 
Just like anything in a great Spider-Man story, Pete's world and Miles' world collide at a certain point. The events of the story bring them together. And we also thought, what would it be like to be a young person in this world and looking up to someone like Spider-Man? I'm not gonna say a lot about the character, but um, I'm really excited to see how he fits into our world and his relationship with Pete and the future. All right, well, call the play, coach. When it came to MJ, the way we looked at her was, how does she fit best in the world that we're creating? Well, MJ would be a great person to help sell the theme of partnership. And we thought, okay, well, great. How do we get that across? Well, she's been known as an actress or a club owner, and you know, most of the time, that's what people think of her as. I'm like, that's hard to show partnership. Um, but what if she was more on the front lines? What would be, what would be a role that could fit into a superhero world? Well. What if she was a journalist? What if she was going for the big story? And it just fit, like, it fit on a high level with the worlds colliding as well as that, that theme of partnership with Pete. The closer I get, the better chance we have to stop them. So the reason we chose Mr. Negative, again, starts with the worlds colliding element. When you have a supervillain who your aunt works for, in a way, you, you automatically have that collision. And I think also it was a way to help us say, this is a new Spider-Man experience. This is a relative newcomer to the rogues gallery. You haven't seen him really before in a Spider-Man game um, or Spider-Man movie or et cetera. Let's put him in spotlight. Also the way you'll learn in the game that his motivations are very personal. It's not just about replacing Fisk and becoming the big bad of the city. There's a very personal side to his motivation. And the third is there's a great gameplay element. You know, the inner demons with their negative abilities and their negatively charged weapons. From terms of a combat challenge, they're, they're excellent to have in the game. Why are you doing this? Because no one else will! Ah! It was super risky to change the, the suit. I mean, it's such an iconic suit. The red, the blue, the spider, the lenses. And I think that we wanted something that was very familiar. So you, you look at that suit and you know that's Spider-Man. But we wanted something very identifiable. When people see it, they go, oh, that's Insomniac Spider-Man. And we thought that um, the white spider would be one of those ways. So you see the very classic, iconic elements in the suit, but you also see something very different because, as we know, that big white spider is reserved for another suit. And to see that suit now on the cover of a Spider-Geddon comic is uh, pretty crazy. How do you like my new suit? Dashing. Where'd you get it? The reason why we chose the Sinister Six was because, remember, Peter's been Spider-Man for eight years. He's been he's been fighting these guys, you know, usually one-on-one. -on -one, you know, he's, he's taken down the Vulture, he's taken down Rhino, he's taken down Electro, Scorpion, and you know, Mr. Negative and somebody else bring them all together. And you know, we want to show what is it like to be an experienced Spider-Man. How do we push an eight-year veteran harder than he's ever been pushed before? Let's give him his biggest challenge he's ever had, the Sinister Six. It was, it was represent, that representation from our villains about he's more experienced, he's older now, and the challenge has never been bigger. And the Sinister Six represent that. Remember, he said not to kill him. Good idea. In fact, we don't have to do this at all if you don't want to. I think the part of the game that really resonates for me is all the different relationships that Peter has over the course of the game, whether it's with his mentor at work or Aunt May, or MJ, Miles, even Martin Lee, to really show those relationships and see them evolve and change over the course of the game is, um, I'm a people person. I love working with people. Um, the studio is like my second family. I love them all. And uh, I think so much about, again, what makes such a great Spider-Man experience is the Peter side and seeing those relationships and seeing how those relationships bleed into both sides of his world. Um, so I'm really happy that we are able to Right from the very start to the, the when the credits roll, um, you see those you see those relationships change, and that's what drives the story as much as the crazy superhero action. But I think that's what's going to make the game stand out amongst the awesome traversal and the great combat and super epic boss fights and a beautiful New York City and all the things in between. Um, I'm really excited for people to experience a Peter Parker story as much as a uh, Spider-Man game. With Fisk behind bars, what's next? And the city's safer than ever. Maybe Peter Parker can have more of a life. Are you in trouble? Do you need money? No, no, I mean, I mean I'm a little behind on my rent, but no, I'm, I'm fine. 
take care of this place. It represents the best part of me. This is Miles. He's gonna be helping out around here. For acts of extraordinary bravery. I'm the one who kept order in this city! What is this? Devil's breath. What is happening to our city, Yuri? I don't know. Feels like the end of the world. Maybe it is. Peter Parker, how the hell are you? The city is in danger. It needs our help. All of our help. All right, well, call the play, coach. Gang of costume nut jobs is taking the city apart piece by piece. Time I return the favor. This is opportunity knocking. You know the closer you get to them, the more you become a target, right? The closer I get, the better chance we have to stop them. I've ordered Silver Sable and her team to shoot you on sight. <laughs> this city's had enough of your vigilantism. You're officially an enemy of the people. Come on, Peter. Your city and everything you care about will be destroyed. The people will beg you for help, but you won't be able to save them. Get more backup. Wait! We've got to play this just right. Maybe the city needs our friend more than you think. You have like a cell phone in your in your po pockets or something?